Now we're going to use Blinkbit software to take a look at the wearable technology shoot. I was working with a producer who was living in another city and we used this software specifically so we could collaborate on the same job at the same time. So at the top of every bid, you need to have your fees. First off, the photographer's fee. You need to get paid for being on the set, taking your pictures. That's $10,000 a day. Pre-production is essentially any meetings or anything having to do during the pre-production cycle of this shoot. You need to get paid for your time there. We have one day of tech scouting, which is going out to the different locations that get awarded or get approved. You'll need to get paid for your time to go out there, take a look at the light, see how you're gonna shoot things. Again, this all speaks to your talent and your abilities as a photographer. And then finally, the usage fees. They chose to go for unlimited time, unlimited use, and so the fees for that was $25,000. The copyright doesn't transfer, but you really can't use the pictures for anything else, so this belongs to the client at this point. Now let's look at the production expenses. First, the production category. The producer gets paid 10 days. Now this includes six prep days, three shoot days, and one wrap day. The production assistant is for $300 a day at six days. Production expenses is sort of like a miscellaneous line item that just covers a lot of small things that can happen during pre-production and production. Production kit is a location printer, Wi-Fi setup, and things that sort of help technology keep moving when you're in the middle of location. If you'll notice, that was only booked for the three shoot days. The first assistant is the most skilled assistant on the set. This person comes in a day before the shoot to make sure all the gear is ready to go, to double check lights, to double check batteries, and make sure that everything's gonna run smoothly. The basic photo assistants, who are also technical people, will come in just for the shoot days, which is why they're only booked for three days. Hair and makeup, a stylist. We added more money in for wardrobe, Wardrobe assistant, always, always book a wardrobe assistant because as one person is styling, the other person needs to be sort of pressing and getting all the clothes ready to put on the talent. And one of the things that's also critical is when you're in a situation like this, time is money. So making things efficient is really, really important. So for an extra $2,100, we just made our whole wardrobe category that much faster. The prop stylist line item is for the person who manages like the different backpacks for the hiking scenario, or the tires for the boot camp scenario, or the different sort of dancing shoes for the ballroom dance scenario. All those types of things go under the prop stylist line item. Overtime is an interesting category because it can be calculated in one of two ways. Here it's just put in as a line item, as sort of a general number, to accommodate any sort of overtime that we go into. Because when you're shooting a library shoot, the days can tend to go a little bit long, so you need a couple hours maybe per day for overtime. Another way to calculate overtime is to put it in the actual line item. I can show you here with the first assistant. If we look here, we can see the assistant's booked for four days for $450 a day. Under the advanced, we can put in the base hours. So base hours means what constitutes a day, how many hours constitute a day. In most scenarios, it's a 10 hour day. So you put in 10 hours, and then 1.5 is the first two hours after the 10 hours and then two times, or double time, is the following two hours, or hour three and hour four after the 10 hours. So if we want to put this at the line item level, what we'll do is put in two hours total, or if it's gonna be two hours per day, we'll put in six hours. And that'll update our line item. Overtime should be displayed in the way that your client wants to see it. Check in with your art producer. Some people like to see it on the line item and some people like to see it as a separate line item. Again, it's sort of an estimation and you have to really work with your producer to decide if that's gonna be necessary. Here we have our digital kit, includes a digital tech, if you can see in the line item notes right here. Digital processing and digital storage. Retouching was put in at zero because this is going to be a separate negotiation depending on who's doing the retouching. If you own your own camera gear, you can absolutely rent it back to the production. This is a common practice and I'm always completely surprised when people don't do this. This is a way to recoup some of the money or the initial capital outlay for your business for the gear that you purchase. So if you have a great 35 millimeter camera kit and you wanna use it on a production, rent it back to the production and make that money back to help pay off the cost of that equipment. Once you get your camera paid off, then when you rent your camera gear back to the production, this is additional profit that you make on top of your fees. 
Insurance, you always need to have shoot insurance on bigger jobs. If something goes wrong, you need to have an insurance policy to cover it. And you may also need per location insurance. Work with a producer on that. They will know all the answers to that. Casting fees, what are you going to pay the casting director to put together all the talent that you're going to review before the actual talent for the shoot is chosen? Here's the ever important talent category, and this gets really expensive really, really fast. Now, there's a critical thing that I need to talk about here. When you're bidding a job, the client wants to see the talent fees included in the bid oftentimes, because they want to see what the entire photo production is going to cost. However, you don't want to run the talent fees through your studio or your production company. It's a lot of money to manage from a tax perspective, and also a lot of money to be responsible for if the last check or the final check for the job is a long time coming. As soon as the job is done, talent agencies want to start getting paid right away. It's better that they go after the client than you because you still have a check that needs to come from the client and you don't want to be responsible for all that. So always include it in your bid, but make sure to indicate that the talent fees are going to be billed direct, which means it can be billed directly to the client. So the wardrobe category is basically all the purchases that we made for wardrobe. Wardrobe expenses is basically little expenses that the wardrobe department's going to have running around town getting all this stuff, lunches, gas, things like that. Props, just like wardrobe, these are a bunch of different purchases that are going to happen that come into the realm of the prop stylist. Expendables are things like tape, seamlesses, transportation, this is basic getting to location, transporting everybody to the whole transportation department. Truck rental, this is for all the gear that's going to end up at location. Parking tolls, mileage, gas, all that sort of thing comes under one line item. Delivery can be if you send a PA to take the hard drives to the client. You need to have enough food for everybody. There's nothing worse than a grumpy crew or grumpy talent. And this is how this broke down here. We have meals for two days and the boot camp meal for far more people was broken out as one more day because the boot camp had the most extras involved. Craft service is the table with all the delicious stuff that's bad for you. And work meal is just for the tech scout. When we're out tech scouting, we're all going to get lunch. So that's what that covers. And then miscellaneous is all unforeseen expenses. This is something that's always included on every bid into sort of a pad. And you have to remember, as this job is getting produced, there's going to be overages on some line items and surpluses on other line items. And as the surplus line items are starting to pan out, money will be taken from those line items to balance out the line items that have gone over budget. And this is a dynamic, constantly changing thing, which is why we have producers. This is a job of a size that absolutely requires a producer because there are so many moving parts and your whole purpose here is to execute your vision and believe me, you're going to be exhausted just trying to get the creative done. There's no way you can afford even a minute of distraction worrying about these numbers. In the next segment, I'm gonna sit down with the producer and you're gonna hear from their perspective about how they move the numbers around while the production is unfolding.